On this episode, we smoke the Mark Twain Riverboat Toro 6x50, and we talk about lighting your cigars, matches, cedar strip, butane, zippo, whatever lights your cigar. We're going to talk about it. Join us for the ride. Burn Line Podcast. The burn line on a well-crafted cigar is straight and sharp as a razor, much like our wit and wisdom. And welcome, everybody, to Burn Line. I'm your host, John Thacker, Jr. And I'm your other host, Keith Luter. Keith, good morning. Good morning, John. And what coffee are we sipping this morning? Today we are drinking the Lincoln Blockade from River Bottom Roasting. Lincoln Blockade. Oh, we had that last week too. Correct. Good. Uh, this is a good black coffee. Now, sixty or seventy-five grams. About seven. About seventy-five grams. Seventy-five grams. So you must have made this before John got here. Correct. <laughs> I knew he was on his way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I think this is the perfect weight for. Uh, Brewing this coffee, love it so smooth and even buttery, black. Right, um, really fantastic. Shout out to River Bottom Roastery, great job. So uh, we got this cigar today, the Mark Twain Riverboat Toro. So, uh, gosh, where do I start? I guess we should start with the price. So Mark Twain is a uh, kind of new uh, brand from General Cigar, right? Yeah. Uh, of course, General's one of the big four, power player, and that's probably why they can sell this for 450 retail. Mm -hmm. A very affordable cigar, and I guess it's interesting that we chose to smoke this because you know I am not an affordable cigar smoker, right? Yeah. Uh, I, I typically pick up cigars in like the 12 to $18 range, something like that when I'm in here. Um, and this one caught my fancy because it was new and different um it's kind of cool the packaging is attractive so right. you know we we like the the artwork side we'll talk a little bit more about that but uh this cigar is a six by 50 toro and it's nicaraguan um i would say that the most striking feature is the barber pole so it is a maduro connecticut barber pole and with a, a Maduro cap on it, um, and all Nicaraguan uh, tobacco. So interesting uh, construction and interesting presentation. I also like the the box. It's kind of cool. Like it's a kind of rustic wooden box, you know, with a painted finish. Um, the wrappers kind of match. Like it's very like if I thought mark twain came to life as a box of cigars it would kind of look like this yeah. you know like definitely has that riverboat gambler feel you know to the whole whole experience right so that is the uh outline of the cigar and with that i think it is time for our official cut and light so let's clip that cigar with authority all right and just a reminder to make sure that you clip your cigar with authority. Don't squeeze it until the wrapper pops. And now it is time for the official lighting of the cigar. And as always, we remind you, toasted, not roasted. Toasted, toasted not, not roasted. roasted. Toasted, toasted, not roasted. Not roasted. Toasted, toasted, not roasted. Toasted, not roasted. It's toasted. I get it. Well, this is interesting because we're going to be talking about lighting the cigar a little bit later. And we have a chance to practice right now. And my lighter is turned up way too high. Yeah, it is. Don't burn your face. That just puts me in mind of that ray gun that we have in the in the lounge. Oh, good lord. Yeah. yeah. That thing will just destroy your face and a cigar. Just talking to the mic so that we can pick up the audio. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that reminds me of the, uh, the ray gun thing that we have in the lounge. Somebody had gifted that to John, the owner here. And, man, this thing was just... Yeah, it looks like, um, <laughs> who's that character, the green alien on Looney Tunes? Like uh, Marvin? Melvin the Martian? Yeah, Marvin, yeah. Marvin the Martian? It looks like whatever he has, and uh, it fucking shoots a butane flame out like seven feet. It's basically a weapon of war. You have to get like a, a uh, NFA Class 3 license in order to purchase it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Elon Musk's not a, not a flamethrower. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right. Rolling this rich smoke around my palate. 
I'm really just at the point where I'm drawing the flame in. I'm not really tasting it yet. Looks like you need a little more fire on that. I was just thinking the same. And as per usual, Keith has clipped his cigar with a deep V cut. And I have used a standard double guillotine straight cut because I'm a real man. Hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know, man. That, that Calibri SV, not sponsored, um, that's one of the best cutters out there, I think. Yeah, well, they're going to have to start sponsoring us if we keep mentioning them every episode. I know it, I know it. It's funny, though, and we'll, we'll probably talk about this at some point, but, you know, we, when we get serious about this hobby, part of it is you do get an attachment to, like, your accessories. You know, yeah. we all have, like, that favorite accessory. Uh, mine happens to be this single-sided double guillotine Perdomo cutter, partly because it's ungodly sharp. I mean, this is a sharp, sharp cutter it's because it's one-sided you know i can clip a standard you know toro robusto whatever um without taking too much of the shoulder off i don't even have to think about it just jam it in there and clip with authority it's a lot harder to do torpedoes with it though (laughs) and you know it adds us a little bit of character in the sense that if i saw somebody with that be like wait that's john's Mm -hmm. that's john's cutter Mm -hmm. i know that cutter i've never seen anybody else with that cutter yeah i know i know my regulars and it's heavy. Yeah. I like the feel of it in my hand and pocket. I mean, this is probably shit uh, four ounces, quarter of a pound. You know, you can you can feel it in your hand. It's all metal. So, yeah, and uh, lighters, too. Now, that's the one thing with torches. I probably have, like, 37 of them lying around. Right. I mean, I have secret stashes at work, in my car. And probably half of them don't work, mostly because I don't maintain them properly. Um, But I haven't yet hit on that lighter that I'm like, that's the guy. So I've got a couple of most preferreds right now. The Zykar lighter is my baby. I love this thing. Yeah. Look how beat up that is. Mm -hmm. It's going to last forever. All right. So we are a quarter of an inch in, and I have a beautifully burning cigar the burn line is wonderful and keith looks like shit so par for the course (laughs) (laughs) um but i think it's time that we can actually start talking about you know like what we're tasting a little bit so um give me your thoughts what uh what are you thinking so mine looks like well my burn line looks like shit right now because i don't necessarily trust that ash and i don't want to get it all over our our table here but flavor profile for it being you know below five dollars i'm enjoying this I, I put that into consideration yeah so um i've got a couple of uh notes i guess the first is you can tell it's a nicaraguan cigar and absolutely for four dollars and fifty cents this uh cigar in the union cigar uh, humidor here in hanover pennsylvania usa uh, this retails for 450 Pennsylvania has friendly cigar taxes. If you're in another state, you might pay more, but a sub five dollar cigar and a box of twenty will set you back seventy two dollars, which is a massive savings over the individual stick price. So come on and pick yourself up a box. But for four fifty a stick, my expectations are not very high. But I will tell you, I am getting a full mouthful of chewy smoke that has strength to it. And while I would put this firmly in the, you know, mid mid-body camp uh it is a real cigar that hits like a mature product at i don't know double the price point would you say double okay Pr- pretty close i mean really it, i think it holds its own in the nine dollar ten dollar range so i think uh, let me take a couple of more tastes before i share some tasting notes mm-hmm. so i like that it has that um slightly spicy Nicaraguan flavor. Um, I would say I'm probably getting a little bit of that sour fruit off of the Connecticut stripe, um, as well as a uh, butternut squash flavor. I have no idea what that is, John. You lost me there. So (laughs) butternut squash is a squash that is named butternut. And 
that's what I'm tasting right now. If you smeared it with butter, tapped on two red pepper flakes, and then turned it upside down on the grill and grilled it, that's what I'm tasting. I taste tobacco, of course, naturally, um, and some, you know, some, some kick to it, some pepper, a little bit of pepper, and uh, a little bit of sweetness. That's what I'm getting out of this, but I don't, yeah. I think the sweetness I would peg as butternut squash. Okay. Like, it's not sweet like sweet, sweet. Right. But it's sweet like when you have a vegetable that has a sweet taste to it. That's kind of the sweetness that I'm getting. Like a butternut squash. Like a butternut squash. Okay. It's a good mouthful of smoke. Oh, yeah, it, I think it's a smoke bomb. It's really putting off a good amount of smoke. And what I like, just looking at the the ash and the burn line, at least <coughs> on my cigar, um, <laughs> the, th- the thing is burning very well. Look at the construction. See, I don't trust that ash. I, I think it's going to just fall over and make a I'm mess. I'm going to hold it over my coffee cup right. and see how long it takes for it to fall off. But it is... Uh, You know, when you look at the um, pattern on your ash, you can see a little bit about the construction, both from head on and then also from the side. And I've got to say that the flavor of the tobacco, the amount of smoke, and the quality of construction definitely exceeds my expectations for a 450 cigar. That's fair. I think this is the kind of cigar that you could, you know, smoke every day. Uh, and be satisfied with it, but also, like, if you're mowing the lawn and it falls out of your mouth, you're not going to, like, right. you know, lose your shit. Like, it, it's still only a 450 cigar, so. Right, and the world of, like, your everyday smokes, this is definitely something of quality. I mean, if you're out there smoking, you know, you're fishing, you're mowing the lawn, you're boating. Yeah. Perfect for that. Boating cigar, for sure. Yeah, it gets wet, who cares? Spark yeah. up another one. Yeah. Yeah, and that's a, a real thing that uh, is part of this cigar smoking hobby, they're expensive, full stop. I don't care, you know, how wealthy you are. You're choosing to roll up a five dollar bill and light it on fire when you yeah. <laughs> when you smoke this <laughs> cigar. And a lot of the times, you're choosing to roll up a ten dollar bill. I would be super clever and like name the presidents on the bills, but I don't know who the fucks on a five or a ten. Like nobody carries cash anymore anyway. So, but a five or a ten dollar bill. Well, a five dollar bill is half of a ten dollar bill. I can do math at least. Right. And, uh, yeah, this is the kind of cigar that you can smoke every day, and most people could afford that, right? right? Especially if you buy it in box at the box discount, which, fair disclosure to everybody on the podcast, I did. You know <laughs> you know yeah. the kinds of cigars I usually buy, and I think this is like the 10th one I've smoked of these. Really? And okay. I lit one up, and I said, for that price point, I'm going to have this in my humidor. I mean, this is the kind of cigar you could give to somebody that rarely smokes, you know, maybe can't handle a strong cigar or something like that and it's still like a real cigar experience yeah anytime we get a new guy who's new to smoking Mm -hmm. you know oftentimes i'll introduce them to you're gonna hate this but i always introduce them to acid um (coughs) so one of these in (laughs) sorry i I just that gag reflex i'm sorry i'll do that for the sweet or the infused stuff but then i'll have one of these now for something introduce them to like a traditional smoke that's not going to break their bank Mm -hmm. so now you know with one acid and one of these we're talking about what 12 bucks the total for two cigars it's not bad yeah no i think uh you know in the in the world of cigars i think this uh particular stick can fill you know a lot of different roles right so i think fishing boat cigar is a great uh category for it this is the kind that you can take outdoors it's got you know enough of a cross section at 50 uh to stay lit outdoors you know the, the smaller the ring gauge, the harder it is to stay lit when you've got a cross breeze and stuff like that. Um, it's burning really evenly. Um, you can drop it in the water, like you said, and, eh, you know, it's, right. it was four fifty, not 1450 you know. Um, but also you can introduce new smokers to good cigars this way. Um, it can fill the niche of, you know, having that handful of cigars in case the buddies come over you know you can you can have a box of it in your humidor for oh shit you know it's it's we're having a football party and everybody wants a cigar i'm not breaking the bank so i feel like um there's a few different roles cigars can play and one of those roles is like the affordable plentiful cigar that's actually enjoyable and this kind of fits that bill right yeah 
I wouldn't be embarrassed to give it to anybody. No. This is definitely that cigar where you know, you're out there, you're, let's say you're bar hopping, whatever. You want to impress somebody in the sense that they might not know much about cigars. This is that cigar where you can just toss it to somebody that doesn't know the price points, and they're going to think that this is a luxurious cigar. Meanwhile, it's you know four four fifty. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's none of the uh, sometimes in your less expensive cigars. One of the ways that costs are kept down is you know by not fermenting the tobacco as long, um, and you can definitely taste that, especially uh, if it's still giving off ammonia, that sort of thing. This I'm not getting any of that so far. I guess I'm an inch in, mm-hmm. and uh, I did tap my ash not over my cigar cup for everybody out there. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> it was getting pretty close. <laughs> it was getting close. Um, I will say that the ash is um, a little less dense, you know, than one of your higher end cigars. Um, but uh, this is definitely that type of cigar where you know you're not you're not tasting like you know some low end cigars like they taste low end. You know, kind of that flat note and right. you know maybe a little bit of that uh, acidity that comes from not being fermented all the way. I'm I'm not really getting that so far, so I'll keep my palate open. But so far, so good. So there's my burn line. Now, now I'm coming back. Yeah, you just had to, you just had to smoke it down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Looks good. I mean, there's just, there's a little bit of pressure there because we called the podcast burn line. So <laughs> yeah, this is uh, mid bodied. Um, it has that Nicaraguan pepper in it. Um, would you say earthy? I would say earthy, yeah, earthy. Yep. Yeah, I think the uh, I think it's the Connecticut part of the wrapper that gives it like a little bit of the like vegetable, um, slightly sour taste, mm-hmm. and then it's the Maduro that gives it a little bit of the sweet and nutty. Um, I'm not getting any of the like cocoa or chocolate, and if you look at the Maduro. You know, this is not a dark Maduro wrapper, um, and so that's probably why there. Um, I do think the smoke is, like, surprisingly chewy, you know, and meaty for this kind of cigar. Okay. So I enjoy the feel on the palate. And I just had a thought. This cigar here would be perfect for the people that want to learn how to infuse and play around with, like, you know, the aging with bourbon or mm-hmm. just the aging process, getting used to that before they dip into a more expensive cigar. So this would be perfect for, you know, you put it into like a little, you know, there's, there's cylinder um, humidors, put one, you know, put it in there with some bourbon, different infusions that you may have and check back, you know, a month or two later and just age it, just play around with that. Yeah. I think that's a, uh, a great observation. This is a quality cigar, mm-hmm. uh, but it's affordable. So if you're doing any kind of experimentation like that, it's probably a, a good one to practice on. Yeah. You know, it's going to be a good product when it comes out. I mean, you can screw it up, but uh, it's good when it goes in. Uh, <laughs> right. And it's affordable. So if you mess it up, you know, you're not beating yourself up too much, you know. Uh, I, I used to do that with the Havana Qs. I actually have a, quite a few right now saved up that I'm playing around with. But I think I might do the same with this cigar here. You know, maybe get some bourbon or something, maybe some Woodford Reserve and just see what I can do with it. So we've gotten uh, an inch or so into the cigar. We're enjoying the experience. And now it is time for your tobacconist tip of the week. And now your tobacconist tip of the week from Keith Luter. Right. So this week's tobacconist tip of the week, Bovida packs. Use them. Uh, there's a lot of room for error when going and using the... Um, traditional distilled water sure and, and a sponge a lot of room for error for that and so with bovida packs you can just set it and forget it not much maintenance to it you know you get right to your cigar you have to worry about you know ruining your humidor you don't have to worry about ruining your your cigars you know this is an easy way to just load them up maintain that humidity maintain it yep because for most of us I, kn- I know there's plenty of nerds out there and they're probably listening to this podcast because that's what nerds do and right. <laughs> sometimes we enjoy conditioning our humidor and, you know, measuring the humidity, you know, digital hydrometer, all of this stuff. Um, That's perfectly fine. Actually, I take that back. Okay. It's a hygrometer. Ah. A hydrometer measures the specific density of a fluid. You might use that if you're into brewing your own beer. Um, 
et cetera, et cetera. Hygrometer with a G measures humidity. And uh, you might be into that. But if you're like most of us, you just want a damn good cigar when you want it. And a great way to control the humidity in your humidor is just throw some Boveda packs in there. Yeah. Just make sure so they're the same percentages. Sustaining. And it'll balance itself out. All right. So let's talk about lighting your cigar. So as always, make sure that you toast it, not roast it. Um, lighting the cigar is a ritual for most of us, and it's a very critical part to enjoying the cigar experience. And so when we talk about like the proper way to light your cigar, we say toast it, not roast it, it with the idea being, you know, when you toast your cigar, you're heating it up slowly. You're not blasting it away. You're not lighting it on fire. This is not a cigarette. And the reason for that is you want to keep the temperature low. Right? The higher the temperature in the cigar, the more acrid the smoke becomes and the less flavor. Right. And so the goal is to keep the cherry as cool as possible without it actually going out at some point. Right? And you want to toast the wrapper to the to the filler and binder. You don't want to scorch that. You just want to have a nice singe, if you will. Yeah, yeah. So properly lighting your cigar is the most important part of enjoying the stick, especially like the first third. Like after that, you can recover most cigars. But you don't want to waste that first third of your cigar either, right? But there's a lot of different ways to light your cigar and a few different tools. And we're going to talk about some of them, starting out with the humble match. So there's some pros and cons to every method of lighting your cigar. And the pro to the match is it is the lowest temperature method of lighting your cigar. So wood burns at a very low temperature. And you can toast your cigar easily. It's hard to singe it, it's impossible to blow it away because you almost have to pull the flame in, you know, while you're lighting it. Um, I highly recommend the match if you are indoors with, you know, no airflow, air movement to put the match out, um, because you do get the best toast with a match. Full stop. Right. Um, however, there are some drawbacks. Right. The biggest drawback is your match has got sulfur on the tip. And I would never recommend lighting your cigar with the lit match end of a match. So typically, we would recommend transferring that flame to a cedar strip. So, Keith, tell us a little bit about cedar strips and right. lighting up. So most of your, your boxes, when you order a box of cigars, they will come with some cedar, right? They're going to help maintain the, the balance of the uh, humidity inside that box. Um it's, it's usually what your, your humidor is made out of. And so what you can do, you, it has a sheet. You break that in, in pieces, and you can light that strip you know, uh, to transfer your flame to your cigar then. Right, right. So that eliminates the sulfur. If you do light with the <coughs> – if you light your cigar with the lid end of a match, you're going to pull that sulfur, and, and it actually detaches from the match head in little particles. And you're actually going to suck that into your cigar. And you will be able to taste it for a, a long while, depending on how long down the, the pipe it gets. Um, so definitely don't recommend lighting it directly from the match. But transfer that flame to a cedar strip, and you can get a nice toast. Uh, yeah, it takes a little bit longer. It's worth it. You're here to sit down for an hour with your cigar anyway. Um, so great method for lighting your cigar. <coughs> Hard to mess up. Very difficult to mess up with a match. If you are just starting out, use an open flame. Transfer that flame from the match to a strip of cedar wood. Go ahead and toast your cigar. And if you don't have any cedar sticks, and you're not a guy that buys you know, bunches of, uh, boxes of cigars, you can always go to your local lounges and ask, like, hey, do you have extra cedar strips? Mm -hmm. They almost always do. Yep. Take advantage of that relationship with your local tobacconist. And, of course, the uh, second method, and probably the most popular, is the butane torch. So the best part about a butane torch, it burns completely clean, mm -hmm. and the butane that they sell for cigar lighters, uh, Zycar, Lotus, some of these companies sell butane. It's 99.9% .9 pure. It's probably more pure than that, but they can't say 100%. Right. 
Um, it burns off completely. You will get zero odor, no transfer to your cigar. It is a very clean flame. It also stays lit outdoors, um, but it has some drawbacks. Like you, It's a skill that you have to oh, develop. Yeah. The first drawback is it's very hot, and you can burn the hair right off your face. If you have a nice, glorious, luscious beard and mustache, I would recommend using an open wood flame, not a butane torch, because if you mess up, you will singe the hair right off your face. And I have done that to my eyebrows, to my eyelashes, which are very long and luscious, so they stick out far and, and catch that flame very easily, um, <laughs> as well as facial, facial hair. I've walked around with bald patches for a few months where I screwed up lighting my cigar. So that brings me back to our, our ray gun that's in there. I mean, yes. People see that, they underestimate how big that flame yeah. is, and they'll crank it the whole way on, and bam, there goes their face. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, but seriously, and also butane burns very hot. Yeah. You will third degree burn yourself if you point that flame at yourself. Um, if you have palsy or something similar that affects your manual dexterity while you're lighting your cigar, highly recommend that you use an open flame, not a butane torch. Um, and then the, uh, those considerations affect lighting the cigar as well. That's another drawback. You can blow the hell out of your cigar with a butane torch, right? And so the proper method is to light the torch away from you and then bring the cigar to the torch, right? You don't point it at the cigar and then light it. Right. You also, uh, if you're using a shared butane torch, like you might have at your local lounge, you don't know if some dumbass turned it way up from the last time <laughs> you were in there. I can't get it to light, man. And next thing you know, you have just blown a hole in the side of your cigar. Yep. Now, I use a butane torch. I will tell you, I have been practicing for two decades. So I have got it down. Um, and it's worth learning because it's a very versatile tool. Mm -hmm. Another drawback that is not usually mentioned, uh, butane does not light below about 40 degrees. So it is not good for cold weather lighting. So if you smoke outdoors, you're on a camping trip, keep that in mind. You do these spring, fall, or even winter camping trips if you're insane. Um, mm -hmm. You know, you're out there hiking. If it's in your pocket, your body warmth will probably keep it warm enough, you know. Uh, if it's in an outside pocket, like your jacket pocket or something, it might get too cold to light. And, and uh, I've had that happen on several occasions. And I can't tell you how disappointed I was that I couldn't sit on the mountaintop and smoke my cigar because my dumb ass let my butane get cold. <laughs> so I did it, did the old stick it in your crotch for 30 minutes trick and got it to light. <laughs> but <There you> go. <laughs> let me tell you, that was a cold, cold lighter <laughs> while I was up there on the mountaintop. But I got my cigar, damn it. That was worth it in the end. So the last method for lighting your cigar that uh, I wanted to touch on is the good old Zippo. So Zippo lighters, uh, here's the benefit. It fucking lights anywhere. I mean, this thing is the terminator of yeah. lighting solutions. If you have a bug out bag for the zombie apocalypse, it better have a Zippo in it, right? Uh, campfire gas and that's the drawback it will light when it's wet it will light in wind it will light when it's cold but it will smell and if you suck that flame into your cigar you're going to smell that campfire gas probably till you're halfway done with the cigar now they do make the odorless cigar friendly uh, zippo or zippo fluid but even then there's still a hint of that of that that smell that aroma it just doesn't doesn't sit right with me personally. It has a hint of an aroma, and the other drawback is that particular supposedly odor-free solution um, also doesn't light as well. Yeah. Right? So it does go out in the wind, and it won't light when it's damp, and that defeats the whole purpose. If I'm going to do that, I'm going to go with butane. Right. right? Um, also, the fluid lasts a lot longer than butane. I mean, you can light 20 cigars with a Zippo before you refill it. If you have a butane torch the same size, I mean, you might get two or three cigars, you know? Yeah, I find myself refilling my, my Zycar lighter, man, like five, six times a day while I'm working in the lounge. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, that sounds familiar. I had one that was similar, but a single flame. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it's a nice, friendly pocket size, but that also means it doesn't hold a lot of butane. Right. So um, pros and cons to 
some methods of lighting your cigar. If you could use an open flame, man, I love that. It's a great solution. You can't, it's so hard to mess it up, you know. Butane, you do have to, to learn how to use it effectively and, and not blow your cigar away and just burn it. It's very hot. you got to hold the cigar much farther away than you think you do in order to toast it. Um, and then also, especially depending on if you get, like, some of the cigar dottle into the lighting chamber, which is very common, um, it messes up the flame. And so you'll, you'll light the flame, and you'll see it's kind of spewing everywhere. And to recover, you turn the flame up. That's normal, right? But when you turn the flame up, now you got to hold it farther away from the cigar. Right. you got to watch the wrapper, see what the wrapper is telling you. Am I, am I getting too close or whatever? Um, but it's my go-to method. It is odorless. Um, it's very effective. It's easy. And then, of course, you have the Zippo. Um, if it's all you got, it's all you got. But uh, just keep in mind, it is smelly. And, you know, smell and taste, like, that's what the cigar is. That's, that's what right. you're enjoying, the smoke on the palate. So unless you want to gargle with a bottle of kerosene, uh, don't recommend it. <laughs> Although, I, I got to say, I do like the soft flame of a Zippo. I mm-hmm. do like that a lot for my cigar. But... Like we said, even with an odorless, scentless, um, cigar-friendly, you know, uh, zip of fluid, is it worth it? Uh, I, don't, uh, I can't say. It's not worth it enough for me to own one. I'll put it right. that way. Right. Um, but you're right. That's another advantage. The Zippo is much like an open flame on a piece of wood. You know, it's that soft flame where uh, it's harder to mess up. Like, right. That's a, a fair point. You, you really have to be trying hard to wreck a cigar with a, with a Zippo. So there you have it, folks, some lighting solutions, some pros and cons. And with that, let's talk about what really grinds my gears. You know what really grinds my gears? Keith, what grinds your gears today? So what's been grinding my gears is getting wasted in lounges. Ooh. And when I say getting wasted, I mean alcohol, of course. Everybody has their vices, and that's why we're here. We're, we're smoking cigars. We're hanging out. But the whole point of alcohol in a lounge, it's to complement your cigar. You know, you want to sample the alcohol, whether it's, you know, Woodford Reserve or Blanton's, whatever you got. You want to sample that with your cigar, something to complement that. You're not there to, it's not a bar. Mm-hmm. If you want to get drunk, go to a bar. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's, you're not having a cigar with your drink. You're having a drink with your cigar. Right. And you're having it with buddies. Right. Right. You're not in your basement. So keep those habits where they belong. Fair point. And by the way, if you ever bring bush light into a cigar lounge, I will personally <laughs> hunt you down and put you out of your misery. And I see it. <laughs> I see it a lot in here. Which I mean, I have no, I have no complaints against beer personally. I mean, I don't think it goes well with cigar personally. But hey, to each their own. I'm not sure if bush light qualifies as beer, but yes, I see your point. <laughs> and of course, uh, Keith and I have different perspectives. If you missed some of our earlier episodes, I am a longtime cigar smoker and fan and hobbyist and of course keith is a tobacconist who runs this blanco lounge here in union cigar hanover pennsylvania usa so of course your uh, perspective is one of helping guests to enjoy themselves and and really maximize their time you know at the lounge and enjoy themselves and and if enjoying the cigar you know can be improved with beer of course, you're going to support that. Uh, for me, I'm allowed to have much stronger opinions because uh, these are not my guests, right? They're my uh, friends or uh, just people that are in the lounge with me. So I'm a lot more comfortable saying that their choice in beer sucks, and uh, Bush Light pretty much sucks with cigars. So, <laughs> <laughs> so last week we went over the bands mm-hmm. and how, how, how easy it is you know, for them to come off. This band did not want to cooperate with me. Yeah, I, I did notice that. So, first of all, it's a, a really beautiful band. It's uh, not overdone, I don't think. It looks like a flat printing, you know. Mm-hmm. It, I don't see any, like, three-dimensional stuff on it, which is good. It keeps the cost down. It does have a little bit of, like, a gold metallic on it, which is cool. And it looks, yeah, it looks great. It looks great. It's a single band that looks like two bands, but they're connected at the bottom and the front, and that makes taking it off a pain in the butt because you have to take two bands off on the back, (laughs) but they're connected in the front, and there's just too much glue. Um, So it is easy to rape your cigar. And my band came off easily, but you can see it also took off a chunk of 
the Connecticut. So it didn't affect anything, and here's why. If you're unfamiliar with barber pole construction, imagine two straight strips of wrapper leaf. In this case, one is Connecticut, one is Maduro. And then you overlap the strips halfway. And then you wrap it up that way. So where this hole happened, the halfway overlap between the Madeira and the Connecticut is happening. And so the Madeira is still like plugging that hole. So I didn't get a hole all the way into the binder and filler, which, you know, uh, once you expose the filler, you're, you're going to suck air through that hole. Yeah. And sometimes it'll even start to combust as you get closer to it, especially, and can really wreck the the experience of the cigar. So uh, that's a drawback, I think, on this cigar. The the wrapper takes up enough space. You have to take it off. It does not slide off. And when you try to peel it off, um, just be super careful because you can tear something up. In my case, the glue actually spilled over the band and stuck to the wrapper. And even though I got the the band off, I took a chunk of wrapper off as well. That's what I'm experiencing right now. I am so glad that we don't have cameras right now. Because everybody would be laughing like, look your, at that, c- <laughs> your, your cigar <laughs> looked like it went through a blender. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> so coming back to the cigar, I guess I'm about halfway through now. What uh, what are you tasting? What am I tasting? I am tasting, you know, the same, the, the I don't want to say bitter, but I'm getting that, that spice almost. Mm-hmm. Not too much, though. It's like a traditional, that kick. I said Nicaraguan, Nicaraguan um, tobacco is coming in. A little bit of, I can't tell if that's caramel, syrup kind of taste. I mean, the description said molasses, but I don't I don't necessarily taste that. But something syrupy and sweet. Right. Yeah. I think mine has settled down quite a bit from the first third. Um, it's a little bit of a flatter note now. I'm definitely tasting more leather uh, and wood, um, as well as, like you said, there's still that slightly syrupy sweet, which I'm... I'm going to attribute to the Maduro um, and also that uh, slight um, like vegetable bitter, which I'm going to attribute to the Connecticut. Um, And it all comes together pretty nicely. And I think having that sort of Nicaraguan spice in the background really helps to fill it out. And and I think without that, I think this would be a boring cigar. You know what it really reminds me of? This might catch you by surprise. Butternut squash. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> that's what i'm getting out of here indeed so john what is grinding your gears what really grinds my gears slow rain drivers and mm. i'm not talking about slow rain i'm talking about slow drivers here's the deal folks it rains in this part of the world it has rained before there were humans in this part of the world and it rains a fair bit because we grow a lot of crops here Well, I guess it's the other way around. This is where you live. It has always rained. So why the hell don't you know how to drive in it? Unless you are driving a German sports car with summer tires on it, freaking drive. (laughs) It's not going to change a damn thing. There's no reason to be 10 miles an hour below the speed limit. And if there is, you have a problem. You need to fix your car or get new tires. Otherwise, I guarantee that this manufacturer has designed your car to drive in the rain. So drive your car in the rain. And if you're on one of these winding two-lane back roads that comprise 99% of the roads in my area of the country, and somebody like me is behind you impatiently trying to get on with their life, do everyone a favor and pull over and let them pass. You can go as slow as you want, but when there's a half mile of cars lined up behind you honking and flashing their lights and tailgating you, it's time to pull over and let them go. So that is my very uncharitable what grinds my gears this week. I like the reoccurring themes that we're seeing here. You know, I fuck up my cigars. You complain about driving. <laughs> High speed, low drag. That's right. Reoccurring themes. I enjoy that. I like driving. I'm a driver. I went to the Skip Barber Racing School, in fact, which was a blast. North Carolina. Um, once you learn how to actually drive a car, it's impossible not to drive it correctly on the roads. And nobody else does, and that gets annoying. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a road. It's a racetrack with extra rules. Right. Yeah, I would uh, I would have to recommend this cigar um, to anybody that is looking for a real smoke that is enjoyable, uh, that is also affordable and, and won't break the bank. So 
there's uh, room for this, I think, for daily smokers. If you are the kind of guy that smokes a cigar every day, uh, this is one that you can add into your rotation that's not going to break the bank. Right. And I think it still is, um, you know, an enjoyable, pleasurable experience uh, for the mature cigar smoker. Um, I think it also fits the bill for people that are a little newer to cigars and you want something that's mid-bodied uh, and enjoyable. Um, I think this is a good good pick for you. And then, as we said before, I think it fits great into that slot of, you know, I need a handful of cigars for that time, you know, when I've got the buddies over and the women are all in the kitchen talking and they're getting a little too loud and so you all step out on the back porch and, right. and hey, it's the back porch, man. Where's the beers and cigar, right? Um, and then another advantage, I think, of this cigar is because it's mid-bodied and relatively mellow, uh, you can't, I don't think, I think it would be really hard to wreck the flavor. You know how sometimes your palate, like different things fight right. over your palate? Um, you get a Padron, man. You got to be careful what you imbibe with that cigar, not just because you don't want to ruin a 20-something dollar cigar, but also because, man, it attacks the palate with authority. Oh, yeah. Know? like So you, you can't just drink anything with it. Yeah, Bud Light would work. I mean. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. So, But you could smoke this with a Bud Light. You know, this could be a football game cigar. Yeah. You could drink it with coffee or tea or wine. I mean, just how it's playing on my palate. I feel like it would be super friendly. And one of those cigars that you don't have to worry about what's in the cooler or whatever, right? Yeah, it's very versatile. Like I said, this is a great cigar if you want to play around with infusing, mm -hmm. you know, experiment with aging, um, you're fishing, you're skiing, whatever it may be. It's a very good hobby cigar. You know, you're out there fishing, yeah. whatever it may be. Jack of all trades kind of thing. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So... Again, we are smoking the Mark Twain Riverboat Toro. This is a 6x50, all Nicaraguan cigar. It has a Barber Pole Connecticut Maduro wrapper. A stick will set you back 450 in the humidor here at Union Cigar Hanover. Box of 20 will cost you just over 70 bucks. Great deal. Um, I think that uh, I think we've smoked enough of this cigar to, to really get a good profile. I'm not done yet, but... We need to wrap up this uh, podcast. Mm -hmm. So any closing thoughts on the Mark Twain Riverboat Toro? Yeah, my closing thought would be, you know, one of our reoccurring themes is a value cigar. Mm -hmm. Whatever that means to you, whether it's by price, by your enjoyment. I think this would be, on both standards, this is a very high value cigar. I agree. I think that's a great point. I think it's a value cigar in the sense of, providing more enjoyment than you would expect for the cost. And I think it's a value cigar in the sense of being a budget cigar. It's just flat out affordable. And that's all that we have for you folks. Thanks for joining us on Burn Line Podcast. We will see you again next week. See you guys.